подъезде. Товарищ Сталин приехал. Здесь находится. А разве было такое время, когда мы воевали без Сталина? И... Сталин всегда с нами. Stalin's leadership in the USSR began in 1929. Just as Lenin, his predecessor, Stalin continued using art as a means of propaganda. Arts of all kinds, from film to literature to painting, were under state censorship and had to much the communist principles. All works of art had to show progresses and successes achieved under Stalin and communism. What emerged in art under Stalin was known as socialist realism, whose main principle was to elevate the common worker, whether factory or agricultural, by presenting his life and work as unmiable. There were mainly two varieties of paintings and propaganda posters under Stalin. Some depicted peasant men and women working together, or sitting in front of tables groaning with food, with tractors or threshing machines in the background. Other ones were focused on Stalin, usually presented in a white suit as a father of all Russians. It was one branch of the cult of personality. The other one was film industry. Films in Stalin's Russia were focused on praising Stalin as a hero of the communist nation. There was even an actor who was given an ultimate position of playing Stalin. His name was Mikhail Galovani. On the other hand, an increased production of documentaries on the economic plans began. Literature had to reflect the great themes and heroism of the Soviet achievements. Books, newspapers, magazines, they all were the tools of propaganda, expressing devotion to Stalin, glorifying the workers and showing Russian peasants happy with their lives on the collective farms. Even the book titles were connected with communist principles. Examples include How the Steel Was Tempered or The Great Conveyor Belt. Among all the written works and films, one of the most important features of Soviet art under Stalinism is Vera Mukina's monument, industrial worker and collective farm girl. The man holds a hammer and the woman next to him a sequel, the symbols of communism. After Germany suffered drastically from the Versailles Treaty, Adolf Hitler and the Nazi party ascended to power preaching unity and the rights of a new order. The new order was to affect every aspect of a German life, including culture and the arts. Nazis despised the modernist styles of the decadence. The main art themes included blood and soil, anti-feminism, emphasizing pre-industrial images of women, anti-Semitism, and Nazi notions on the superiority of the state and the permanence of the Reich. Joseph Goebbels was made Minister of Propaganda and Popular Enlightenment in 1933, and his office imposed rigorous censorship on all art forms, encouraging only those convening a suitable propaganda message. In May 1933, Goebbels coordinated a burning of the books, this symbolically and physically destroyed works associated with Jews, Bolsheviks and Negroes, as well as anything seen as a decadent and un-German. Films were used partly as a propaganda tool, for example The Eternal Jew, and partly to provide relaxation. The Reich film chamber controlled both the content of German films and the foreign films that could be shown. There were some great producers in the Nazi Germany. One of such was Leni Riefenstahl, who flourished and produced works of art, even if the ideological themes were controversial. 